Welcome to another Dynatrace Community Tips and Tricks session. Today it's about lookup tables, a rather new feature, and uh, I brought in one of our early adopters of this feature, Daniel Ellams. Hey Daniel, how are you? And uh, please uh, introduce yourself quickly to the audience. I'm good, Andy. Thanks for having me here. Um, my name is Daniel Adams. I work for Freedom Pay, and I'm an observability engineer. I've been using Dynatrace for about three years now, so cool. we've been really happy to have some of these new features. Yeah, and it's exciting that you are willing to share your best practices and lessons learned. You actually did today, you built a little bit of a demo that you can show and share with us. But let's get started with lookup tables. What problem does it actually solve for you? Yeah, so one of the things we've been using Dynatrace for heavily is, is biz events and looking at our trace data in real time. And a lot of the time our apps are not coded to um, show customer names or um, so, uh, real plain text human readable stuff. It's mostly IDs being passed back mm -hmm. and forth. So a lot of our dashboards um, that everyone uses, whether it be operations or the business, um, have just been looking at a bunch of IDs. Um, and that's a little confusing to the human mm -hmm. eye to look at um, because now I need to know what does that ID mean. Yeah. Um, so the lookup tables for us have been used to add context to that data um, and allow us to group things by customer or by country or stuff that makes sense to us humans, right? Yeah. Cool. So it's yeah. very useful in that aspect. Yeah, and so I guess the dashboard, I know this is a, um, a demo dashboard that you built, but all of these, um, the stuff that we see in the legends, this is all data that comes from the lookup table. So basically replacing those internal IDs into something human readable. This is awesome. Now, for those people that uh, want to start with this, can you maybe walk us a little bit through how you started, which uh, materials you used, and then I know you have an example, maybe you want to walk us through it? Sure. Yeah, so I first want to go to the, the documentation um in dynatrace so this is really good documentation here this image here is actually a really good representation i'm not going to scroll down through all the mm -hmm. docs yeah. but um, basically we are just uploading a file it could be a csv it could be a json l it could be xml file um, into grail to be used as reference data mm -hmm. um, so take a little screenshot of that cool also uh, folks if you're watching this in the uh, recording uh, summary of this video, you will also find the link to the to the, the documentation page. Yeah, yep. cool. So this is obviously this is not real data, but this is a sample um, file of what your um, in this case a CSV would look like. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our our different columns here. So this is the customer name, the customer code, the customer ID, a particular store ID, and the country that store is located in. Um, and I'll show you how we parse that in just a second, but that's as simple as it gets, like mm -hmm. really simple file, um, and the upload is super fast. So we do need to parse this file, and to parse this file, we can use DPL. Mm -hmm. um, and so in our request to Dynatrace, we are doing an upload here. You can see this is a lookup upload file. Mm -hmm. um, we pick the file from our uh, computer in my case it's it's called fake clients with store ID dot CSV mm -hmm. and then we pass in the uh, the name the description what the unique identifier lookup field is going to be in this case it's store ID um, the file path we want to store it in Dynatrace and we'll mm -hmm. look at that in a little bit um, and then the parsing pattern and in this case you can see it's very simple um, DPL where I mm -hmm. specify those field names that I just went over in that CSV Obviously, if you're using JSON L, um, this gets even simpler because your parsing pattern yeah. is just JSON. Yeah, that's really cool. And so, uh, I know you have a CSV file here, which I assume is a very common file format for many. But any any file format, any line-based um, data set, can easily be then ingested because basically what you're saying here, this is the logical name of this data set, of this lookup table, a description. Um, then you have the file, obviously, where you store it. And then as we are uploading this file, this is how Dynatrace can interpret and, and analyze a single line. And then what are the field names? Client name, client code, perfect. And then overwrite through, I guess that means if you keep uploading it, um, you would overwrite existing data. Right, so if it's a new file, you don't necessarily need that parameter at all. Um, I think the default is false, actually. Yeah. Um, but if you are updating your data, like let's say it refreshes every week or month or 
day maybe, um, you're going to want to overwrite that data so the people using that lookup in Dynatrace still have the same exact command, but they're using the new data. Cool. Awesome. Yep. So let's, should we jump into Dynatrace? Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So we showed the dashboard, but I actually made a notebook that helps display kind of how you can view and play around with the data in Dynatrace. So, so first, this is stored under a data type called dt.system.files. Um, so if you just fetch those, you will see the list of all the files. And that's where you can see, like, this is my test right here. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the path, the display name, the description, how many records are in it, the size and mm -hmm. bytes, um, and then the user that uh, added it, your lookup field, and then the type. And th these are all tabular lookups. So that's how you can display a list of all, what are all the files available to me. Mm -hmm. um, then if we want to view the particular contents of a file, we just load that file. It's a new command um, mm -hmm. in DQL. Mm -hmm. So we load and then use the file path and we get the exactly what you saw in the CSV, yeah, except yeah. now it's in nice pretty columns based on my parsing. Um, and then here I have a quick example of just how I'm fetching some biz events and using the load commands to um, grab that data, that lookup data and enrich my, dang it, the cat got in the way. <laughs> yeah, the cat is Crap. a good, is a third, is a third uh, guest here. It's all good. Um, so yeah, this is how I can enrich my data. You can see I'm doing two different loads here. This is my this is my tests. Mm -hmm. um, I just call the source field, the lookup field, and then the prefix I want to use a normal lookup command if you're familiar with mm -hmm. that in DQL. Um, but yeah, you can see how it's the prefix here is client, so you can see how it adds that to my existing um, biz event records and enriches mm -hmm. that data. Cool. So um, basically, so what you're saying notebook. there. Yeah, what you're saying there, if you, if you keep on that on that query, um, you use the lookup command and basically say look up a record from that particular lookup table and the uh, source and the lookup field. Obviously, this uh, this is kind of the, the primary uh, index here or the the identifier that will then identify the row. Cool, perfect. Yep. So the lookup field is the one we specified when we yeah. uploaded the file. What's my unique identifier? And I'm taking this field, which is from the biz event, yeah. um, to look up what's my client name, what's my client code, yeah. what's the country um, from that file. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if we flip back over to the dashboard, we can go over what it's actually doing. So we showed this at the beginning. Um, and this is a good represent representation of the kind of dashboards that we're looking at now. Um, obviously, previously, when we were trying to show customer name or something, we would see um, just the IDs of our customers mm -hmm. and IDs of the stores here. Um, these are all fake customers, uh, yeah. AI generated. So, mm -hmm. um, And we weren't able to do stuff like this at all um, in Dynatrace anyway, um, mm -hmm. like splitting by country and stuff like that, because we didn't have that enriched data at all in Dynatrace. That's something we would have to go back to like our our SQL database or whatever the system of record was to figure out, okay, where was this store um, in the world and mm -hmm. split the data somewhere else, not in Dynatrace. So mm -hmm. this gives us a real time ability to split the data and group the data however we, we might want to in a human readable um, fashion here. I think you bring up a good point here on data enrichment, right? Because the other option, as you said, would be to enrich the data as you're ingesting it. So you could, um, uh, ingest or enrich the data wherever you get the data from, maybe even in the open pipeline. But with this approach, you have the raw data with the IDs and then for your analytics, in this case, the dashboard, you're then basically just then merging the uh, the ID with uh, the data in the lookup table here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yep, so if we look at one of these queries, this is basically what you saw in the notebook. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously we're, we're making a time series so that mm -hmm. we can show it on the dashboard, but mm -hmm. very simple, like this is the this is the command that gives me all of that context, just one a one-liner. Um, and now I have that country that I can split mm -hmm. by. Cool. And then uh, I see in your dashboard, you also have variables, client, code, and country. That means, I assume you can also just use the lookup table there for a dropdown. Yes, exactly. Um, so if I edit these variables, you will see what I used. 
So for client, I am just loading client. the file and getting the client name. That's really cool. So basically the load, the new load comment is really like a fetch logs or fetch whatever, or fetch business events, and now the load is just loading that particular table here. Yeah. Well, yep, exactly. Awesome. Um, uh, one quick question. Um, so you, the, the name, the file name, so it always seems they all have to have a slash lookup and then a table name. Um, I guess this is just a standard you have to adhere to. That means you, you need to make sure when you upload things that they are uploaded in that particular file name format. Yeah, so they all have, the, the, only, um, the only thing you have to have is the slash lookups. Okay. Everything after that was stuff that I did to just mm -hmm. organize them. So I tried to think of it as just a directory like on my computer, yeah. uh, on Windows or on Linux, right? You just have a directory of files and that's where you can kind of organize. Obviously you can see I, I did codes for um, things that might be yeah. our custom codes that we're translating into descriptions and stuff like that. Um, and then stores for that store level information. Um, so yeah, it's just a organizational thing, but really all you need is slash lookups and then something after that to start storing your files. Cool. One last question in your work in your organization, um, how do you push the data into Dynatrace? Do you use Postman? Do you have some automation running? How do you push and keep the lookup tables in Dynatrace up to date? Um, so currently it's it's just manual through Postman, but we're building automation mm -hmm. that will take the data from, um, we use SQL on the back end, so it will um, scrape the SQL database once a day. Um, mm -hmm. And if there's a difference, which there should be in most cases, yeah, it yeah, will yeah. Um, push that with the overwrite true. So it'll push that new file over um, to Dynatrace and then validate that that got there successfully. Cool. Um, so yeah, we're, we're working to build automation to make that more dynamic. Yeah, cool. Awesome. I'm really excited. It's a very, it seems like a very simple feature, but yet it's very powerful because you can really make these dashboards and notebooks uh, better accessible to your end users, right? If you bring, if you provide more human readable names. Uh, anything else that we missed, Daniel? No, I don't think we missed anything. This is, uh, it's a very powerful feature, like you said. Um, I just know that previously when we were on P1 calls or something, everyone was, uh, what's, who's the customer, what, who's yeah. impacted, you know, whatever. That was always the question is who's impacted, which customer. Uh -huh. um, and now it's just very apparent and it's real time and people can just share screenshots and stuff directly from Dynatrace. It's really nice. Awesome. Hey, Daniel, thank you so much for this tips and tricks session, showing us how you are working with this, how you are you using this. Um, also, you are giving us a, a full demo um, thanks for making the effort to create some demo data as well. Thanks to AI as well. Uh, and uh, I hope to have you back on another session. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for having me, Andy.